all right what's up boys and girls of youtube i promised the roll tier lists so we're gonna finish them we've already done jungle did that two days ago we did mid uh yesterday and now adcs will be today as you can see from uh from the screen so we're just gonna jump into it gonna knock it out real quick um as i said before i kind of just go off of ssop s plus top picks which you're looking to play still get banned some but usually get picked or should be picked s tier are the ones that almost always get through but are definitely picked and then a plus is your gods that don't necessarily need a team comp or anything specific they're just still really strong a need a team comp b plus more like that's your favorite god so you're gonna play it and do it well if it's your god uh b is like bottom of the barrel counter pick for some reason c and d are trash so we're gonna start off with amc amc is seeing a shit ton of play amc is not getting banned um based on the idea that, that that's a lie so amc is not being top banned hunters in these lists remember this doesn't mean these gods are the top like you don't have to top pick these gods in ranked or in comp it just means that they're the gods that might be banned out of all of the bands out of the 10 bands um or sorry eight bands and then uh they're also the gods that you want to pick would be s plus like i'm talking about bands s tier are the ones that usually aren't gonna be banned and are gonna be picked so honestly based on that i'm gonna put amc in s plus amc is crazy high potential because of the poke the easy farm the consistent damage the sustain you're quick your rotations are really really fast your objective burn is awesome and you're just really hard to kill in team fights. So that alone makes AMC strong. On top of the fact that if you watch the mid tier list, AMC is a potential mid laner as well. So you have a flex there out of an ADC, out of a very good ADC, which is super scary. On her, you're gonna go down into A tier. More yeah, A tier. You're gonna need a specific comp or reason to play this. That's why I'm between A and B plus. Realistically, if you're like, I need CC immune ult, you could pick on her. It wouldn't be the end of the world. It's not really good because late game on her falls off and you're almost always making it to late game. That's why I'm in between these two. I mean, depending on the argument you're trying to make, if you're picking on her, it would be in B plus because you're usually picking it in, like if you're picking it because of a matchup, B plus, right? Like you're trying to counter pick. That's the reason you're playing it, B or B plus. A tier in terms of your comp requires it or their comp requires you to pick it up and it's not a terrible pick Apollo gonna be down here to B plus you're really only playing Apollo if it's like your go-to and you have some crazy way of playing in strategy and matchup that you like like all of those have to come together it's not necessarily a good pick uh just because of a situation that oh sorry that doesn't really happen very often Artemis A tier weaker on the clear uh the reasoning i haven't gone over this so i'm sorry about that we'll jump back to honor on her falls off late game plus wave clear is meh artemis decent late game, really pretty good late game if you can get the late game lacking of mobility you need to be running a dive comp that's gonna put her in a and then apollo wave clear isn't crazy team fight isn't really good you aren't super safe you do have a global ultimate and a cc immune all but you're standing still and it's very easy to die cern i think cern was one of the most overrated adcs by casual players uh, the god is not super safe. The self peel is iffy. Your wave clear isn't anything crazy. Your poke isn't anything crazy. And your team fight is okay. The ultimate is okay in team fights. You don't have real lockdown. You have a, a root, but it's like a fucking weak ass root. So you're just basing it off of being an auto attack hunter that has a steroid. Chernabog. B plus, maybe even down to the B. You would really only play this if you're running a specific strategy of uh, split push and ulting in team fights with the global alt or using the global alt to pressure out the opposite side of the map and you're playing around the soul lane. Could happen, rare. Chiron, B plus. Only coming up, in my opinion, if you need the dispel, say they have Fenrir and your Geb is already banned. You need a dispel, you have to have it. Chiron. Kronos, S plus. If fitting magic damage in your comp isn't a problem, so you have physical support, you have physical jungle, you have physical solo, you're running two mages, whatever, however you're looking at it, as long as you aren't running too magic heavy, Kronos, S plus, top tier. So really all the time you should be in that situation where you aren't magic heavy. Kronos is going to be top tier. Uh, amazing late game with the hard reads reset on the team fights. Um, you, you essentially can't die unless you're crazy out of position. You have a ridiculous amount of mobility because of your movement speed you have a stun lockdown you have really good range damage you have good poke you have good wave clear the god is all around really good in the current meta 
Cupid, B+, plus, you're only picking Cupid as a counter pick into leaps or into a counter pick in your matchup versus the other hunter. It is not all that common that Cupid has a good counter pick with the gods that are really, really good right now. It just doesn't happen. Um, any god with the CC immune all or just the ability to move quickly out of the ult is going to get away. And there's not going to be anything you can do about it. Freya, S+, plus, another one. Uh, hopefully, I believe it's the last one. Nah, uh, yeah, it's the last one. Um, so Freya banned almost every single game. I almost would put Freya up in like SS tier, to be honest. It's just at the highest level, she gets through and teams can play around it. She's safe because of her ult up in the air. But if you have a comp that can poke, can force that ultimate, can reset and heal, which a lot of comps can right now. You can play around the Freya. That's the only reason I don't really want to put her in SS, but her clear is insane. Her one-on-one -on -one is insane. Her laning phase is insane. Her safety, is, assuming you're positioning very well and ulting properly is insane because that ultimate just keeps you out of anything bad forever. All righty. Hachi, S tier. Safe hunters are very strong right now. Safe hunters that can clear are top tier right now. That's why Hachi's there. Hachi lacks the amazing team fight. And when I say safe, I mean the ultimate and a dash in the comp in, in your in your kit. The ultimate mainly in lane makes it so you should never be ganked unless you're being aggressive. Say you're fighting and then you just lose the fight. It's not really being ganked. Um, in team fights, you're usually using it as an engage. You will do have it for potential disengage, just not very common. And that's why Hachi doesn't quite add up to these gods because it, it's a more of a safe fault for the laning and getting into late game and then the ult becomes a little bit less of a safe ult and more of just part of your damaging kit in the late game oh ye a tier okay matchup late game is is decent the ultimate can be really good for zoning really good for securing objectives or just keeping them out of of pushing into the objective like you could drop it on it that's gonna be hard for them to steal hard for them to engage and the god is overall okay laning is okay wave clear is okay um the early fight that used to put ho Yi ahead is kind of gone that's why you see ho Yi just kind of chilling today is anami b tier even after the buffs two or three her wave clear is not enough because her team fight is ass and her safety is non-existent the dash is faster but it's still a telegraph dash that people can, can catch up to and you can't really do anything about you're also your self peel is super lacking with just the silence damage jingwei s tier safest hunter in the game uh, essentially impossible to die unless you fuck up really badly. You have the massive alt. You have a crazy long dash. You've got crit early on a god. Uh, poke potentials there. Clear potentials there. Team fight potentials there. Late game is insanely strong. You're gonna have Jingwei. Honestly, looking at competitive, you would put Jingwei up in S plus along with these gods. But looking at ranked and casuals, because of the way the games go, because Ranked casuals don't always follow the same meta of leaving the hunter alone and needing to be safe. That's why I'm only putting her in S in the overall tier list. Medusa, poo poo right now. Uh, B tier. You have wave clear, but you have weak late game team fight. You're not safe at all. Your wave clear isn't anything special. It's just normal. Like there's no reason to be playing Medusa. Neath, if you need global alts, great. Has lane clear. It's not super safe. Gets fucked by a lot of matchups right now. Nuwa. B plus, you, I have seen Nuwa ADC. We saw it last year as well. Having a mage that can clear from the tower is dope. Having a global alt late game is dope. If you're running a hunter or a lot of magical damage, or sorry, a lot of physical damage elsewhere, having Nuwa in the lane is okay. You just won't be looking to be aggressive with the Nuwa. You'll be looking to AFK farm and get the late game. Side in, B plus. We saw this in SPL the last week. It's kind of a similar situation. Amazing clear. Okay, just not safe. Better team fight, though, in the early mid uh, late game kind of doesn't really compete the same as Nuwa, but pretty good late game. But your early and mid is really good. So you need to pressure. You need to be looking for early objectives, early goal furies, early red buff invades, and try to push that into something. Once again, you're only playing that if the comp requires more magic damage or you're just a Poseidon main. Rama, A+. I think Rama's really good. Not quite as safe as Hachi and Jingwei because while you do have a CC immune alt type thing, you're up in the air, you can't take any damage, blah, blah, blah. You are stuck in that one place. So Rama's much better fitted into dive comps. But you don't have to do that. The god is really good team fights, crazy steroid and high damage late game. Good clear, just not quite as safe as the other gods all throughout the game. Scotty, A tier. I think Scotty gets 
buffed in any way scotty jumps up to s tier to be completely honest with you with the current items and the meta and the way things are played almost like an amc pretty much the exact same as an amc i think actually i lied i think scotty did is getting buffed in the in the patch so maybe i should base it off of the scotty buffs in the patch because wait did scotty get buffed in the patch now i want to go look real quick because i don't remember you know i don't remember i don't know what the fuck's going on there's a patch tomorrow maybe it's not scotty buffs who the fuck knows we're gonna leave her in a for now if she gets buffed like i said i think she jumps up it, like good buffs damage buffs um any kind of movement or uh like speed increase to what she already has definitely buffs her up to s tier in my opinion soul a much better consistent magic damage not quite chronos level nowhere near as safe uh the ultimate is really good in team fights but doesn't really soul just doesn't do anything until you get to like really late game like mid late late game so securing objectives kind of meh burning objectives okay but nothing crazy laning is nothing crazy there's no she's just not the best she's not super safe early either so that's also a downside clear is also not the best early either uller is going to be a tier risky because uller has a bad late game definitely a lot of potential to force kills and force invades on red and purple and rotating because you have good clear but the lacking on the late game just makes it very risky to play all in a meta where you always make late game and then shibalake well i don't remember scotty's changes or if scotty's getting buffed to be honest i literally have no fucking idea i do know shibalake's changes the ult no longer can stun so you can just keep on moving through that all while people still think shibalake's ult is going to be good i don't think it's gonna be terrible but I don't think Shibalaki is going to be great anymore. I think the the threat of being stunned, you have to play around the fact that you can't use abilities and stuff during that time because if it's going off, you'll be stunned. Made the god insane. Now with just the turning out the lights and being harder to see, I'm not sold on Shibalaki being insane anymore. I am really, really not. So we'll see kind of where that goes. But... um. As of right now, I'm putting Shibalake, would have said S plus before, all the way down to A once the patch hits tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe I'm wrong, but I doubt it. I, I really, really, really doubt it. <laughs> so that's the tier list, guys. Uh, I'm sure you could have thrown some other mages in there. Well, I know Hebo ADC, blah, blah, blah. Like, these are the, uh, the gods you should be looking at potentially playing in the ADC role. And that's where we stand. That's it. If you guys like the videos, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I'm dying. Please subscribe. I will see you all in the video later today and tomorrow and the next day and, and so on.